Welcome back to my channel and in today's video we discuss the muscles of arm. Most probably this would be the most easiest topic with respect to the muscles of the body because these muscles of the arm are quite known to each and every one of us and you might be already knowing the names of the muscles of the arm and it is so sure that uh, at least you might have heard the names of these muscles somewhere around uh, in uh, your life and thus this becomes a very easy discussion but still as medical students let us understand the muscles in terms of origin insertion nerve supply and action and the muscles of the arm can be broadly classified into two types which includes the muscles of anterior compartment of the arm and muscles of posterior compartment of the arm so the muscles of anterior compartment includes three muscles which you might already know the coracobrachialis the biceps brachii which is the most common one most well known one among these three and the brachialis and the muscles of the posterior compartment is just a one single muscle that is a triceps brachii let us expand our concept into these muscles and understand its origin insertion nerve supply and action in detail as i told you the muscles of the arm can be divided into muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm and muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm and definitely you know the muscles of the anterior compartment of the arm they include the coracobrachialis coracobrachialis and uh, you might be very known with this muscle as i told you earlier that is the biceps brachii of course known as the biceps muscle and the brachialis muscle so if you uh, feel that you will forget these names you can just look at these names and you can see that brachialis biceps brachii b is here and also brachialis these are quite related terms of course brachium brachius is related to the arm in greek so uh, denoting that all the muscles have brachialis or brachii ending with them so you can remember this muscles very easily one is the coracobrachialis and there is a biceps brachii and another is the brachialis muscle and of course you just have one single muscle in the posterior compartment that is your triceps brachii what is that muscle the triceps brachii which is often known as the triceps you might have heard about strengthening exercise for biceps and triceps in gyms etc okay now our idea is not to understand the muscles in terms of a strengthening exercise but rather focus on to the origin insertion as i always tell you need not by heart the origin and insertion of this muscle always look through the landmarks the important landmarks in this region and if you look at this landmark this is the uh, shoulder region arm region and do you know which is the arm region this is the arm from shoulder joint to the elbow joint is arm this one is the forearm okay so when you look in this arm region that is from the shoulder region into the forearm in the elbow you have to just look at through look again into the landmarks in this region you have the process you have the coracoid process you have the humeral head you have the glenoid fossa you have the scapular anterior surface now look at the first muscle coracobrachialis the word itself tell you where is its origin this muscle will origin from the coracoid process and it is an important landmark in the scapular region so this muscle will be originating from the coracoid process like this okay so where is the origin of coracobrachialis the origin of coracobrachialis is is in the apex of coracoid process the word itself tells you yes here it is the origin apex of the coracoid process clear that's all and now what is the origin of biceps brachii biceps means always remember it is two it is a two headed muscle by by means two tri means three so it's a two headed muscle so it has two heads of origin one is the long head and another is the short head which are that one is the long head and another is a short head always remember this you have to just remember the short head of the biceps is uh, originating from with related to the coracobrachialis don't need no need to study about the coracoid process just remember it is originating with respect to the coracobrachialis where is the coracobrachialis originating even if you forget coracobrachialis you can just think by the term coraco is the okay so coracoid process so the short head of the biceps brachii will be originating from the coracoid process itself the short head of the biceps brachii also will be originating from the coracoid process what about the long head 
the long head should be definitely above that okay or somewhere away from it that is from the supraglenoid tubercle you have the glenoid pos over here and here you have the supraglenoid tubercle where is that the supraglenoid tubercle this is very easy concept because uh, you know that there is the glenoid fossa just above that the supraglenoid tubercle and also from the coracoid process is the short head arising so this is the short head arising and this is the long head arising so simple it is so let us just mark it one this one is arising from the which one the supraglenoid tubercle the large head of the or the long head of the byssus brachii is arising so we got the long head of the byssus brachii and we got the coracoid brachii and now we have only the brachialis left over of course the brachialis is completely related to the arm alone okay the arm alone so this muscle has an origin from the anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus where is it it is arising from the anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus okay anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus and uh, mostly the medial and lateral surface of the shaft of course you know that uh, this is the shaft of the humerus okay and you have here the medial surface which is related to the head of the humerus and here you have the lateral one okay medial and lateral surface so this will be arising from the anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus and associated intramuscular septa need to remember that just remember it arises from the anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus so this will be the muscle known as the brachialis purely related to the arm or the humerus alone no near relation with the uh, scapula region so this is how you have to remember the muscles in this region origin just draw one diagram relate the things and look for the landmarks and finally write down the answer so this muscle is arising from the coracoid process this muscle is arising from the supraglenoid tubercle and this one is arising from the anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus that's all about the origin of these three muscles and now let us look into the insertion of these muscles you might know the insertion of byssus brachii but what about the coracobrachialis the coracobrachialis muscle will be arising from the coracoid process and it passes on like this and it passes on like this through the medial aspect of the arm it passes on like this and it insert into the mid shaft of the humerus on the medial side mid shaft of the humerus on the medial side that means this muscle is not spanning up to the elbow the other two muscles are up to the elbow in fact this one is starting from the mid only okay so this muscle is just inserted into the mid shaft of the humerus so if you look into the arm like this you have the byssus brachii over here and this aspect you have the brachialis coracobrachialis this aspect but you have the coracobrachialis so, so coracobrachialis muscle will be arising from this coracoid process like this and it will span out like this pen or this marker over here inserted into like this okay and now that is the insertion of the coracobrachialis very simple just remember it is inserted into the mid shaft of the humerus and which side medial or lateral side definitely this won't insert into the lateral side it will be inserted into the medial side okay the origin of the coracobrachialis is also from the shaft of the humerus anterior aspect of the shaft of the humerus now what about the byssus brachii you know that the byssus brachii is having two head one short head and here you have the long head the long head will pass on to the glenohumeral joint you know that it will pass through the intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove and later on both these heads will join together and forms the large belly of the byssus brachii like this this is the belly of the byssus brachii in the arm and finally both this joints together as the biceps tendon and insert into one important landmark um in the elbow that is in the radial tuberosity what is that in the radial tuberosity that in the radius you have the radial tuberosity and this muscle will be inserting into the radial tuberosity just before the insertion this muscle will in fact span out like this as a flattened tendon and this flattened tendons of the muscles are known as the bis aponeurosis so this will be known as the bicipital aponeurosis so aponeurosis in turn means a flattened tendons where some long muscles when they are inserting instead of just narrowing like this they just span out like this and insert such insertions are known as bicipital aponeurosis so, so the biceps brachii muscle arising as a medial and long and short head 
comes together, joins as a single belly, and later on become a single tendon and insert into the radial tuberosity of the radius. And before inserting into the radial tuberosity, it just spans out like this. It just spans out in this direction to the fascia that covers the anterior compartment of the forearm okay anterior compartment of the forearm it just spans out like this so that uh, it is more efficient in a forced dissipation maybe that might be the reason so that is the insertion of biceps brachialis what was the insertion of coracobrachialis so simple you have to remember the mid shaft of the humerus what is the insertion of biceps brachialis into the radial tuberosity so what is the insertion of brachialis let us make it much more easy into the ulna tuberosity and you know that in ulna you have the ulna tuberosity and this brachialis muscle is inserted into the ulna tuberosity so that is a radial tuberosity and counterpart of it you have the ulna tuberosity which makes it much more easy to remember and something more easy is the nerve supply of this muscle each of this nerve is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve what is that each of this one is supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve which is a branch of the brachial plexus so you don't have to remember and by heart each uh, three different nerve supply but just one nerve supply will do the thing that is a musculocutaneous nerve what about the functions i think that most of you know that what is the function of biceps brachii this one elbow flexion it is a chief elbow flexion or powerful elbow flexion and which one the supination and it is a supinate you can just do this movement supination and you can see that your biceps is getting activated so that is the supination elbow flexion and supination but of course this has a long head which is arising from the scapula huh? and short head also from the arising from the scapula so this will flex the arm in the glenohumeral joint also so what are the functions of the biceps brachii flexion of arm at elbow this is the flexion of arm at elbow and this is the supination at the elbow but at the arm or the glenohumeral joint also it has a function helps in the flexion of the arm at the glenohumeral joint this is the glenohumeral joint so it helps in the arm flexion it helps in the elbow flexion it helps in the supination three different functions right okay and now what is the function of coracobrachialis if the function of biceps which was arising from the scapula is flexion of the arm at the glenohumeral joint, the function of the coracobrachialis also would be the same because coracobrachialis is not going into the elbow complex. So it is a flexion of the arm at the glenohumeral joint, flexion of the arm at the glenohumeral joint. That is a function. Now what about the function of brachialis? Is brachialis arising from the glenohumeral joint? No. That is arising from the shaft. So only one function that is the flexion of the arm at the elbow. In fact, the thing is so easy that each of these muscles are flexors itself and they have <coughs> the flexion role in the elbow for biceps and the brachialis muscle, whereas corcobrachialis is flexor at the glenohumeral joint. So that is the so simplest discussion of uh, arm muscles in the anterior compartment. And now you have the posterior compartment of the arm. We have the posterior compartment of the arm. Where is this uh, posterior compartment? Uh, what is the posterior compartment muscle? Only one single muscle is there. That is the triceps brachii. Of course, the word itself tells you triceps. Uh, that means it is having three heads of origin. It is having three heads of origin. Let us look into the heads of origin. Of the discussion of the triceps is more easy because it's only one muscle in the posterior compartment of the arm. This is the posterior compartment of arm. And it is having three heads of origin. One is the long head, similar as the biceps, long head. Another is a lateral head and another is a medial head. What are that? The long head, lateral head and medial head. The long head will be arising from, we had in biceps supraglenoid tubercle. Just opposite of that infraglenoid tubercle the long head will be arising from the infraglenoid tubercle and the medial and lateral head will be arising from this is the posterior surface of the humerus posterior surface of the humerus just the posterior surface medial and lateral head both of them are arising from the posterior surface of the humerus in fact there are slight, slight variation with the origin of medial and lateral head but you need not specify into it just remember in a simplified manner that is the posterior surface of the humerus what is the posterior surface of the humerus so that it makes it more easy you just have to study two heads instead of three one is infraglenoid tubercle and both of them others are medial and lateral heads are insert origin from the posterior surface of the humerus 
clear now look at this posterior compartment of the muscle posterior that is a triceps where is it or inserting it is arising as three heads later on joining your belly of the bicep triceps muscle and inserted into the olecranon process and inserted into the olecranon clear and is inserted into the olecranon since it is inserted into the olecranon it will cause the extension of the forearm the function includes the extension of the forearm it is originating from the infraglenoid tubercle so the extension of the arm also is a function it also helps in the extension of arm at the glenohumeral joint and extension of the forearm powerful extensor of the forearm forearm in fact you have seen that biceps exercise people are doing with extension of forearm in this position etc that's something extra still you just have to remember the biceps muscle insert in the olecranon process and the function uh, triceps muscle insert in the olecranon process and function in growth extension of the forearm and extension of the shoulder right and which is the nerve supply of that any idea that's a radial nerve which is also a branch of the brachial plexus so the anterior compartment was completely supplied by the musculocutaneous nerve except the brachialis lateral part is supplied by the radial nerve which if you want you can remember otherwise just fork at it and the posterior compartment is supplied by the radial nerve itself and finally to add on the triceps also can help in extension of the shoulder at the same time adduction of the shoulder in a little bit in a little manner or a very minimal contribution in the adduction of the arm adduction of the arm and extension of the arm now there is something interesting clinical aspect in this region which is of course the rupture of the biceps tendon oh god rupture of the biceps tendon yes the, usually the muscle tendons are not ruptured but sometimes the long head of the biceps can be ruptured okay sometimes the long head of the biceps can rupture like this and what can happen is that it won't produce any uh, functional deficit because it is just helping in the flexion of the forearm arm other muscles are there which can help in the flexion but what happens is that when the forearm is flexed you can see that uh, there is some projection some pop eye like projection because its lateral head long head is no longer tied to the in supraglenoid tubercle so what happens when you flex the long head will just pop it out it will just come like bulged out so that appearance we call it as the pop eye appearance pop eye appearance pop pop eye appearance so that is some clinical aspect which is uh, a condition where biceps tendon can be ruptured and in this condition pop eye appearance is a classical sign where it is just the lateral head which just bulge out when powerful forearm flexion is attempted that's all about the muscles of the forearm arm region and i hope that this is one of the most simplest discussion and you are quite very known with this muscle just brush up this and you will be able to remember it throughout your lifetime until then stay tuned and in the next video we will see with yet another muscle group in the upper limb